Looking to maximize your golfing potential? Learn how from one of the world's best golf instructors. Join today at WDGLC.com. Hey there, everybody. Wayne DeFrancesco here. Welcome to my website. We're looking at... Uh what has been called one of the best swings ever on the tour, Tom Pertzer. I think one of the magazines decided that uh, he had the best swing. Sort of a Steve Elkington-like uh, reputation as being that perfect tempo, nice lines in that swing. So let's Let's take a look. We got some real nice shots here. Um, if we if we go to a picture of Tom nowadays, or uh, probably a few years back, but you can see what what age does to you. Look how thin he is on the left here. A little thicker here on the right, but that's normal. So we'll compare those swings here in a moment, but. Uh, Let's stick with the uh, the early swings because these are the swings that uh, really grab people's attention. Uh, it really had a nice flow and look to it. So if we slow it down, we'll be able to make some more comments. Now, Pertzer won five PGA Tour events between 1977 and 1991. Uh, after he turned 50, he won four Champions Tour events between 03, 2003, and 2007. He had three top tens in major championships, uh, the best being a, a third in the U.S. Open and a fourth in the British Open. So, not exactly what you might expect from the best swing in golf, if indeed it was that. Uh, of course, he could have been held back by his putting and short game. I'm not sure about that. But let's take a look at the swing and see what we got. When we look at it from the rear view, you see a what what I would call a, just a classic pivot. You got the hips pretty much perfectly in the box. The head just slightly right loaded. Not much on the lowering department here. If we watch it from the back, pretty up as far as no lifting though. So real stable. And again, something that um, aesthetically people really like swings that don't move much up and down. Although, as you've seen if you watch a lot of my videos, that most of the great players uh, lowered in the back swing and in the forward swing and so they ended up significantly underneath that top line there so you can see another reason why the swing was so pleasing to the eye look at the shaft line up at the ball perfect plane there and when we get to the top a nice full every, again Everybody likes that club being parallel to the ground at the top. Learn the Pivot Compression Golf Swing. Join WDGLC.com today. The classic definition of full swing. Uh, you can see the hips still in the box. Not very dynamic, but certainly mechanically just about what you want. Knee movement pretty symmetrical here. And then if we look at the at the progressions here, we go from 53 to 61 to 65, eight and four, and I would call eight and four the, the pretty much the average progression for good players. Uh, you go tight, like Hogan, four and four, four and five, and then you go some different versions of Tiger Swing, like 11 and 1, or and then to 
to more like uh, eight and eight and two or three. So Perzo's got that eight and four. It sits up there real nicely. You can see the face is good. The wrist action is good. In the first move of the downswing, you see that the hands are almost coming out at the ball. Just a little bit lower than that. I sort of gauge them between the feet and the ball, pretty much halfway. Now, this is where you get something that that I would call a reason for a backswing this good not to quite produce the results that you might expect. And again, when the swing is operating at full speed, this kind of thing is not easy to see. So when you this swing is a little slow down. Uh, in general with the, the videotape, but it's very obvious if you focus right now on his forehead how much he backs out of his shot. So there's the there's the head at impact. I would call that a good four or five inches back. And again we don't see much of any any lowering at all. A little bit right there, of course pretty much 100% of good players when they push off are going to lower a little bit here but not much. So as the head backs up you can see the hands approach from higher than they started from up here and if we watch the release his head will go up and you see the right hand turn over fairly rapidly so he's got that full roll going with the arm the right arm is straightening if you watch the right arm this is something I like to watch different players is, is to see where the right arm approaches from and of course when you back your head up your arm might appear to be more behind you but certainly the hands are coming in a little high and you can see the right arm straighten right there more out to the right but certainly the hips are right dead in the box which is another reason that swing looks so good when you focus on the the body movement so if we look at the the angle that he produced between the shoulder and the waist here is another line that I like to draw. That's a nice sharp angle there in the low to mid 30s. Now, so given all that's so good, why do you suppose he backed out of it so much? Let's take a look from the front view. And certainly you can see that the sequence is pretty much impeccable here. We've got the We've got the lower body sliding forward and you know I'll randomly draw lines for people and that's just about how much I always draw that line forward. If we go back to this view and we watch the left knee we want to see when it disappears and of course right in that neighborhood the left arm is parallel to the ground so another another item that's uh, something that I would teach regularly would be to clear the left knee uh, by the time the left arm gets up here parallel to the ground in the forward swing. Certainly even though the camera is pretty blurry here there's no evidence of any throwaway or anything like that. You're not going to see throwaway in good players like Pertzer but again with the blurriness we can't really tell where the left wrist is at impact you can kind of see here that that by by the time the the club is just about past the left leg the hands have fully released and the club's parallel to the ground the most the, the ball strikers that I would rank as the as the best would would probably have the the shaft more here and not quite as reset 
Now as he hits through the ball, no great effort to straighten the left knee. And this is really a hallmark of swings in the 70s and 80s. Um, is that the left knee pretty much kept sliding forward. Percha was one of the... He listed it, I didn't realize he was this big, he's listed at 6 feet tall and 200, over 200 pounds. And he could bust it, so he was one of the longest guys out there. But look at that right footwork, great drive off the right leg. So, a bunch of stuff here that's excellent. Now, here's my, my theory about this. The, the sensation of releasing down the line, so let's say the ball is taken off this way. So the sensation of having the hands move toward the target and, and trying to keep the club face down the line and square, if you ask me, will cause the head to want to back up. Because if you keep your head out and the hands come in a little closer to the body, the arms are going to be in front of the chest. And instead of throwing off the body down the line, they're going to travel a little further around before they release. And the hands would exit more around to the left than you see them here. Now, how hard, actually the ball was going this way. So how hard would it be for a guy like Pertzer, if someone suggested it to him, to keep his head out? Well, the first thing you have to do is suggest it and just see if a guy this talented could just say, okay, I could do that, and just keep his head right there. Now think about that, if he did that, the angle that he produced here wouldn't fade, it wouldn't go away so fast. See the pullback there. So you can see as he, as he bails out of this shot like that, his arms are going to be flinging more out to the right. So obviously that technique has been used quite a bit. You see Mickelson does it a lot, backing up like that, and, and a lot of players do that. So I think partially the, the sensation of chasing the club down the line kind of causes that. And also not quite understanding that if you keep your head out that it would be okay to lower as opposed to backing out. So I always like the guys who keep their head out over the on the line and lower during the swing so that as they hit it the upper body is not pulling away and then the arms don't aren't pulled out away from the body through impact. Now if we go over to take a look at his swing, much later in his career, and you can see how the, the eventual thickening of the body kind of messes with your ability to, to make that turn. But there's the the release action that we were talking about. And you can see the upper back is a little straighter. I mean if 
you experience any strain in the lower back, it's much more likely that eventually you're going to ride through the thing with your right side and finish a little flatter up there. And then if we look at it from down the line, again we can see the difference in the body type and the posture, much more bent over, hands lower here. Still with the club, the same type of takeaway. And if we again watch what the head does here, you'd have to call that a, a signature move. There goes the right arm a little bit. And again, with age, that hip depth is more difficult to manage. So I would say that in this particular setup, his weight's a little more on his heels as he bends over and lowers his hands. So he's definitely more likely to end up to the right of the box at the end here, like that. Still, really nice looking tempo. And of course, you don't win five times on the PGA Tour and four times on the Champions Tour unless you can really play and hit the ball. So, again, a lot of classic things. I think the thing that makes his swing not the greatest ever is that right there.